Welcome to the Blue Cafe, we bring you stories of faith, love, and devotion. Yeah, just kidding, please help us grow by hitting that like button. Now on to the story. My 21M girlfriend, 20F, was raped while in the process of cheating on me. I don't know what to do from here. I've been sitting here for like 15 minutes trying to figure out how to start this. My head is completely spinning, my thoughts are just all over the place. I guess with the backstory, I've been dating Sarah, not using real names, for just under two years now. She has a close friend John, who she's known since she was a child. I never liked him, he was always a little creepy, blatantly flirted with Sarah for the entirety of our relationship and made occasional passes that I was not comfortable with. So cut to like two weeks back Sarah and I were invited to a gathering slash party by a mutual friend. I had a workshop for work that night so I couldn't attend and with current circumstances I was never going to be never inclined to go anyways. I didn't want Sarah to go either but she was very adamant and I guess I just didn't want an argument so I said fine. We ended up running into John later that day and he mentioned the same party and asked us if we had been invited as well. My girlfriend told him she was going but I wasn't and he got this weird smile on his face and said something along the lines of, if you're going I guess I have to go. Just something about his smile and the way he said it really rubbed me the wrong way. Plus I didn't want to be possessive but the idea of the both of them together all night at a party did not sit well with me. After we got back to our apartment I told her, a bit more firmly this time, that I'm not comfortable with her going to the party, especially with him there. She told me I was overreacting and shut down the conversation. I'm sure most of you can figure out where this is going, I went to the workshop and she went to the party. It got to like 2 am and she hadn't gotten home nor was answering my calls, naturally I was incredibly worried. About an hour later one of her friends called me and told me was found unconscious at the party and driven to the hospital. She was raped by John, after spending two days including that night at the hospital and talking with police I took her home. She told me John drugged her and dragged her upstairs where it happened in one of the bedrooms, the house the party was at is very large. She was an absolute mess, she didn't want to go outside, she wasn't eating, and had terrible nightmares. I did everything I could to comfort her through this process. I was devastated for her and hated to see her like this but, and I know this makes me sound like a terrible person. I don't blame her for John assaulting her but I couldn't get the fact I tried more than once to dissuade her from going to the party and specifically saying her being with John makes me uncomfortable out of my head. I feel I could have done more to protect her and she should have listened to how I felt. Important side note, turns out John is literal living garbage, after her assault we both felt it was best to get justice. There were drugs in her system and all the physical indications of rape. We immediately filed a restraining order and the police opened an investigation. Within the span of a week after news had gotten around two other girls came forward with similar encounters with John, so the guy is basically a serial rapist. Cut to now, my girlfriend is still in no better shape than she was two weeks ago. She gets panic attacks out of nowhere, she's lost like 15 pounds and absolutely refuses to leave our apartment even to seek therapy. I was committed to taking care of her and being there for her but I got a call from one of my close friends Sam this morning. It was a long conversation but it basically boiled down to him as well as many others at the party that night saw Sarah flirting with John the entire beginning of the party. According to him and people he had been talking to she was at the very least matching if not being the initiator in these exchanges with John. He also recounts that she wasn't blackout drunk or seemingly that out of it and worst of all many saw her holding John's hand taking John upstairs. At this point I feel like I want to vomit, he told me he wanted the situation to cool down a bit before telling me and was going to tell me after the party what happened but with her being taken to the hospital under the circumstances he didn't feel it was the right time. I decided to not assume anything and asked her about the specifics about what happened that night. She tried to tell me the same thing that she was drugged and dragged to a bedroom but when I told her what Sam had told me the color completely drained from her face. 
she started to panic and I did my best to calm her down but it was at least 30 minutes before she could catch her breath to speak. She was sobbing but she was coherent enough to understand and basically confessed to cheating on me. She said she was drunk and hadn't been out for so long she wanted some adventure. She admitted she was the one that took John to the bedroom and wasn't dragged there against her will. She kept apologizing and saying it was a terrible mistake and that nothing else was a lie, he did rape her. I believe the last part, as far as I can understand now, was when they were in the bedroom fooling around when he slipped something into her or something like that then he forced himself on her. I don't know what to do anymore, she was raped but to me the everything before that was her still intending to cheat and actively cheating on me. I am devastated and I don't even want to look at her right now. I left the apartment and am currently at Sam's house. I don't know anything anymore. She lost her job to Covid, I pay rent for the apartment where her name isn't on the lease and groceries. She's become completely emotionally dependent on me the past few weeks. If I did break up with her she would have nowhere to go and as much as I resent her I don't want something terrible happening to her. Please help, I need advice, don't know what to do. TLDR, my girlfriend was raped by a friend at a party I was uncomfortable with her going to. I found out she lied and omitted the fact that she was in the process of sleeping with him that night anyways. She is both financially and emotionally dependent on me and I need advice. Edit, there's been a lot of responses in a short time so I thought it would be best to address some things here. First off, I've been made aware that two posts of somewhat similar situations have been posted to this sub in the past two weeks or so. I don't know what I could post here to prove this is true without exposing my privacy so I'm sorry but all I can do is give you my word I'm just here looking for advice. I don't think this is something someone should be fantasizing for a karma farm, it's completely upended my life. Second thing is people questioning Sarah's account of the events, I didn't include every detail because I'm just trying to get my thoughts out but her story matches the other two women who came forward in terms of the pattern of John's behavior. The two other women were also initially in a consensual environment before he drugged them and assaulted them. From what they've said and posted a large part of the reason they didn't come forward was because it started as consensual and they thought that would make them not be believed. I also didn't want to get too graphic but the nature of Sarah's assault was very violent and not something most anybody would consent to so that may be why he drugs them first as well. She had and still has traces of large bruises around her neck and other parts of her body as well as scratches and gashes. I don't really doubt at all she was indeed assaulted. The drug found in her system was ketamine, while Sarah did enjoy partying she never did anything harder than weed. Third, Sarah has been living abroad for school since starting college. Her parents have been made aware of the situation but coming from a very religious background while concerned for her well-being aren't exactly being supportive nor have put in the effort to come see her. She never had many close friends for as long as I've known her other than John. I don't know where she would go if I told her she can't stay at my apartment. I've posted an update, here. Update, my, 21M, girlfriend, 20F, was raped while in the process of cheating on me. I don't know what to do from here. Slash r slash all. Hey everyone, sorry I've taken so long for this update and lack of replies on the previous post, you can check that out that previous post here. I needed some time to sort out the situation but I did read as many replies as I could and I appreciate all the advice and messages especially from those who had been put in similar situations as I. I guess I should start by clearing a few things up. First off, to everyone who thought my story had holes in it, it definitely did and I'm sorry for that. At the time and even now I was missing a lot of information and was filling in holes as best I could with what I had. I also didn't want the post to get too long so I left out information that I guess would have painted a better picture of my situation. I'll try my best to include those missing details. If you're just interested in the update skip down a few paragraphs. So details about John, he is part of Sarah and I's social circle and lives quite close to us, 
Some of the behavior from John towards Sarah that made me uncomfortable throughout the course our relationship included, constantly making comments about her body, putting his arm around her every chance he could, asking her to go with him on trip to Europe last summer just the two of them, poking her breasts when she's wearing tight clothing, saying things like I'm lucky I met her when I did or she would have been with him by now, etc. It's not any one thing but accumulation of everything that made me uncomfortable with her spending a lot of time with him. She never encouraged his behavior at least when I was around but didn't actively discourage it either despite we openly talking to her about my boundaries. She just brushed it off as them knowing each other for so long and being comfortable with one another. A few smaller details I guess were relevant I should mention. 1. We are not in the US, COVID while still obviously an issue in our country our area is relatively COVID free and everyone going to the party Sarah went to a part of our larger social circle. It was at a large condo a friend of ours was renting for the summer. It was not some open invite party with 100 plus people. Still dumb I know, there were 30ish maybe 40 people there so in hindsight yeah no one should have been at the party to begin with. Lastly, clearing up both Sarah and I's financial situation. I am lucky enough to have my parents paying for my tuition whatever scholarships didn't cover so I can focus my resources on just day to day living costs like rent, groceries etc. Sarah on the other hand was pretty much thrown to the wolves after finishing high school. Her parents like I stated in my edit are very religious and very controlling so they told Sarah they were only going to pay for her schooling if she went to a local college. She refused and came to my school. She lived in residency for her first two years which was covered by financial aid. I got my apartment about a year ago and with covid and her not wanting to go back home we decided it would be best if she moved in with me. Her finances are basically completely tied up on tuition and student loans so I offered to keep paying full rent despite her living with me full time. Actual update, oh boy I wish I could say things have gotten more clear in the past week but honestly it's been a total clustered CK and it's only gotten worse. I spent a few days at Sam's reaching out to friends trying to get a clearer picture of what happened that night before going back to talk to Sarah. I got told the same story multiple times, that she was the one who started flirting with John and led him upstairs. I should say right now in my first conversation with Sarah confronting her she didn't explicitly say she had intended to sleep with him that night she just confirmed she took him upstairs. She was basically having panic attacks throughout the entire conversation so I had a hard time pushing for clarity. So by this point in my heart I was trying to find any excuse at all for her to save our relationship but my mind was telling me that the relationship was over at least for the time being but as many of you commented despite my obviously grief in losing a two year relationship I decided I'd be willing to let her stay in my apartment again rent free to at least the end of October to sort out other living arrangements and support. I called her about three days after staying at Sam's and told her I'm willing to listen to her side of the story but I need the complete truth about everything and she agreed so I went back to my apartment later that evening. We sat down and I asked her about what really happened that night. She started crying right away but not panicking and told me she had to tell me something about herself. Sarah has always been into the partying scene more than me, I've never really been comfortable around drugs and that environment in general but I went with her anyways about once a month or so. Her on the other hand would have girls nights out and parties pretty much every weekend. Right at the beginning of our relationship I told her I'm not really comfortable being with someone that is involved with hard drug use, my brother has a history of addiction and I've seen what it can do to somebody and the people around them. She told me that's fine since she only drinks and smokes weed occasionally. Well it turns out for about a year now she started doing harder drugs at parties when I'm not there and her girls nights were often just her and some from our social circle John included going to a friend's apartment to do shrooms. I was shocked to say the least and I didn't even know what to think at that moment. I just tried to ask her more about what happened on the night she was assaulted and if she was intending on cheating on me that night. She comes clean and tells me she did lead John upstairs but swears she wasn't trying to sleep with him but wanted drugs. 
He told her it was cocaine but obviously it was not since only fentanyl and alcohol showed up in her system at the hospital. She told me he immediately started coming onto her but she tried to fight him off but eventually she was too drugged out to fight back. After consoling her for a while I asked her what her relationship with John was really like before and if they did anything together before what happened that night. She admitted that they made out a few times before around Christmas last year but promised it didn't go any further than that. She was begging me to forgive her and that she needs me in her life. That she just was in a rebellious phase because of her upbringing. I didn't know what to believe anymore and still don't to be honest. I just was completely overwhelmed by everything, so I told her I needed to clear my head and left again. Sam was nice enough to let me stay at his place again. I talked to some of my friends she said she was doing drugs with and they confirmed, I was pretty upset at them for hiding it from me but they told me she basically forced them to keep it a secret from me. It feels like so much of my relationship was a lie, she wasn't the person I thought she was and she lied constantly for who knows how long. At this point my mind is basically made up so I called her and told her it's over but she can stay at my apartment till the end of October but only if she finds a therapist and gets help during that time. She basically lost it during the call but my mind was made up so I just said I'd be staying at Sam's for a while and hung up. I wish that was the last of the SHT that happened but literally a day after that I started getting spammed with hate messages and calls from friends, relatives and people I don't even know. Turns out she's posted all over social media about how I was breaking up with her because she was raped and was kicking her out with nowhere to go in these covid times. She also wrote that I've been emotionally abusing her after her assault, victim blaming her and stopping her from getting a therapist. I'm completely lost, I'm furious, heartbroken, I can't even describe all the emotions I felt. I called her again that night and told her she has two weeks to move out now and I don't want to hear from her again. I had to spend the past week playing damage control, trying to clear my name on social media calling friends and family. I was ostracized by co-workers though luckily my boss was on my side, I was getting doxxed death threats, my life basically fell apart. Sam thank god was completely understanding through all of this and said I could stay at his place until Sarah moved out. She's moving out on Friday but I don't want to go back to that apartment anymore. I've had to cut out friends, my reputation is now in the garbage. I lost the first and only person I've ever loved, I don't know anymore. I lowkey want to die but I'll find a therapist sooner or later. I just feel numb to everything. I don't even know if I'm right or wrong in this situation anymore. I hope I haven't rambled on too much, I know this post is really long but thank you really for everyone who showed support in the last post, it meant a lot. TLDR, girlfriend lied to me about the night she was raped. Turns out she was with him that night to get drugs, had been doing hard drugs behind my back for months cheated on me with the friend that ended up assaulting her and then lied on social media about how I had been emotionally abusing despite my best effort to support her causing my life to fall apart. Edit, someone's comment made me realize she was still lying to me the second time I talked to her. She changed her story about what she was drugged with and I didn't even realize. I was not told by the hospital what she had in her system and I'm not very knowledgeable on drugs in general, all that information I had came from Sarah. I don't even know if she was drugged against her will at all at this point. God, I'm doubting everything now, this is not the person I thought she was. I don't even care, she's out of my life now. We hope that by sharing these stories with interested folks like you, we can help people recognize the signs of a relationship in trouble, and avoid so many of these heartbreaking situations yourselves. Have a good day or night. Wherever you are, 